playing humans versus zombies. 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 This is amazing. I got 72 socks. That's 36 pairs. I loaded up that backpack. I played it like all four years that I've been here. Yeah. And it gets pretty intense. It's really fun. Palmer, assistant director of the advanced program. Yes. Um, I just had a quick question for you, if you're, if that's all right with I'm you. I'm in a big hurry. Oh, just a quick question. I, uh, I was wondering about the. There was an event a few years ago that happened during a humans versus zombies game. Can, do you have any comment about no, that? No, I have no comment on that. No comment. Uh, I have to go now. Ma'am, just one word. This is certainly evidence of a, of a zombie. Uh, plague in medieval Ireland. Uh, there's some even suggestion that, uh, that in the Renaissance that uh, what attracted William Shakespeare to his dark lady was the fact that she was a zombie. Uh, that's never been proven, it hasn't been disproven, it's one of those things. Uh, what exactly they are, we're not sure, except that of course they used to be alive and now they're dead. And one of the remarkable things that that, that means uh, is that they're not afraid. They're not afraid of death. Why should they be? They're dead. Uh, in that sense, they're like uh, they're like tigers. They're like sharks. They they simply go forward. They have no reason to look back. Most of what we have uh, for zombies is really a psychological condition, um, where people have. Uh, an existential rage. They've come to understand that they've changed and they're different and they didn't respond well to that. When they all feel like they've been taken advantage of, they all feel a revulsion at their character. They want to get back what's been taken from them. One of the things that first happens in a zombie's brain is that it accentuates the natural self-loathing. As Sigmund Freud mentioned, there were kind of three levels of human uh, knowledge of self and part of it is the death wish that goes with some natural part of our brain, causes us to take risky behaviors. In the zombie, this gets over accentuated and becomes a total self-loathing um, that drives all their behavior, um, drives them to consume everything in their path, including humans whom they blame for their condition. So this is something that you like to do? Oh, I'm very passionate about my work. It's, it's my life. The real question here is, you know, in order to have a zombologist, there has to be zombies, and I think many people are questioning that fact. What would you say about that? Just to put all the rumors to rest, they are as much a part of the biosphere as we are. Tell us about the uh, zombie eating patterns. Well, zombies, their diet varies, but usually it's about 80% central matter, 20% dura matter, and occasionally they'll have other bodily secretions. Um, why so much central brain matter? Well, it's where the most of the nutrients are. Most of the dense, core, thick part of the brain is where all of the nutrients are, as opposed to the outer, the dura matter, where it's sweet, where actually you'll find most of the younger zombies munching on. I understand that you are um, a zombie expert of sorts. Is that, is that correct? Well, well yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I like to think I'm a zombie expert. Uh, 
A lot of guys do though. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, you got your documentaries out there. You got Zombie Land. You got Night of the Living Dead. They don't know what's really going on. I know what's going on. <laughs> well, Can what? A cup of coffee? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. No. Um, what is going on? If you don't mind my asking, with zombies, you know. Okay. First thing. Duck urine. Yeah, duck urine. Smell this. I want you to smell this. Can you smell this hair? Huh. That's duck urine. That's punching. <laughs> now, you think it keeps them away, right? That's what they say. They say it keeps them away. But really, it draws them to you like flies. Draws them in, right? That's where the movies lead you wrong, you see. The movies would have you believe the duck urine will keep them out. But it brings them in. It brings them in to you. Really? That's just the first stage. That's stage one. I call it stage one. Yeah, that's right. And stage two? Stage two, you got your tinfoil. Right here. You got a good sturdy piece, Reynolds. Comes around like this. Down on top. What does that do? What does it do? It blocks the urine. The zombies have come in. Now it blocks the urine. They can't find you anymore. And the government, they can't see in here anymore. You see, they can't see in here. Tin foil makes them crazy like garlic and a vampire. Now they've come into you, but now you have the advantage. And not everybody can read your thoughts any longer, you see. Right? That's I call that phase two. That's phase two. You sure you don't want coffee? No, I'm fine. Uh, but I'm extremely curious as to phase three. Well, okay. Phase three, you got a cricket bat, right? Cricket bat is the best anti-zombie weapon ever invented by man. It was invented by the Pakistanis in 1938, right? And uh, they've never improved upon the model, upon the design. You got to get the cricket bat, draw them in, protect yourself, right to the head, one blow to the head. Now, you won't see that on the movies. You don't see it on the documentaries. But that's how we take care of zombies, at least in this town. Wow. Um, well, if you don't mind me asking, what, how would you, uh, or what causes would you give for, for the occurrence of zombies? Well, there's different theories on that. One theory, um, it's due to some kind of virus. Another theory, the government's been experimenting. I say it all started when they began to give calcium to the gypsies, right? Fluoride in our water, calcium in our gypsies, yeah? You notice those things always come up together? You notice that comes up together, right? Before that, we didn't see people the undead running around. We didn't see um, men and women, you know, going down the street together holding hands. None of that. But calcium in the zombies, it's calcium in the gypsies, the zombies come up. And you got public displays of affection everywhere. Yep. Wow. Actually, what actually? What do you? Uh, what do you? What do you do here at the university? I didn't catch that. Uh, I don't work here. I'm just making coffee. Oh. Zombies are biologically impossible. There's no way they can be the living dead because they're just dead. Their heart isn't pumping and without blood flow to the brain, there's no way their organs can work and there's no way they can be alive or moving or breathing or talking or walking. And it's just not gonna work. Um, now you're out here selling inspirational books, is that right? Yeah. I'm curious, what, is your, uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on the undead? You people want everyone to believe that everything is real, like zombies and unicorns and dinosaurs. None of those things are real. Uh, what? what about science? How would you, what, what would you have to say if I, if I asked you about, you know, the, the man-eating part of your existence? I mean, it's a way of life. It's, we can't really control it. Because you all have your vegetarians, you all have your vegans, 
it's just how we have to eat. It's not even a choice. Well, true. Maybe the difference, though, is vegetarians and vegans, you know, eat um, plants, and you eat, you know, people with families and. I mean, we don't have a choice. It's just. It's not like we want to. We are humans too. We have feelings. But we just have to. It's what we have to eat. I mean, you want to question a lion for eating a gazelle? Yeah, I mean, mindless beasts. There's nothing. It really, really, we're gonna go. I can't do it. We're, we're civilized people. This is part of our life. This is what we do. Just come out. I don't even really know where it began. I wasn't really that involved, you know? I'm not an active person too much. I didn't even want to be there. <laughs> but, but she got me to go. She did. This was a friend of yours? Yeah. She was a really close friend. She could, she could get me to do anything practically, it seemed like. She was always so much stronger than me. So much braver, so much oh, better. So describe the, the change into the chaos. <laughs> chaos. I don't even know where it began. If it wasn't really a change, it seemed like nothing had changed at all, except now people were dying. Can we, uh, can we get him some more water? Here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We were able to get away for a little bit. We, we ran back to Caddo. We, we thought it'd be safe. We, we'd gotten up to the roof. Stupid idea to do that, but we did. It would seem like the only safe place at the time. She, she locked the door from the inside. Said she was gonna draw him off. <laughs> Never saw her again. No one did. <sighs> How long did you stay on the roof? Not too long. <laughs> Not too long at all. The, uh, the things, I don't know how they did it, but they got there. They climbed up the walls. We tried to fight them, we did. But there were just too many. Just too many. <sighs> how did you make it out alive? I didn't. So, tell me about the event from your perspective. I, I can't. I can't. Anything, anything you can remember. I can't. I. <laughs> was the first thing you noticed that was different? That their, uh, their eyes. <sighs> mm, I can't. You sure? So, um, tell me what you were doing at the game, the Humans vs. Zombies game, at the, on the day of the event. Well, I was, like, protesting the game, because I find it an unnecessarily act of violence, and I don't understand why someone would even participate in something 
so unneeded as a game such as that. So what happened when the change actually took place? Well, we started seeing way less humans. And basically zombies were just coming out of everywhere. But when confronted with one, I like donated my left hand and made friends with it. And it joined. So you donated your left hand? Yes. Oh. Left hand. So you you gave the zombie your left hand. Yeah. And then what did it do? He joined my protest. They're actually kind of nice if you take the time to talk to them and not just run away screaming like most people would. I survived because I had one thing none of the other students had, discipline and ingenuity. First I made my stronghold in the cafeteria. I made fake brains out of leftover food and I covered my shoes in ketchup. But probably the most valuable tool I obtained there was a roll of tin foil. It sounds weird, I know, but that foil saved me from many a close call. But the cafeteria didn't hold for long. Next few days, I was constantly on the move. Then I noticed that the zombies would never go near that big Grim Reaper, you know, the one behind Caddo. So I perched up there for a week until the zombies completely disbanded. I slept upright and drank my own urine. Can you tell me about the Grim Reaper? It was a creepy looking scarecrow in the backyard where no one ever went. They all were afraid of it, scared out of their mind. Maybe that's why the zombies were scared. Maybe they remember it or something. I don't know. So what is it that you do here on, on the campus? Uh, I'm the gardener. I, uh, I garden the, uh, the gardens. Gardener? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, behind the, uh, the Caddo dorm, there's a, a tall, uh, shadowy figure. Um, it's kind of imposing. Do you, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. You mean the thing that keeps me from uh, even the lawn mowing place? Yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Um, have you had any strange experiences with that? No, I didn't, I didn't even know what was there, for the most part. Right. Well, that's funny, just because um, a lot of uh, students at the advanced program seem to think that it has these uh, supernatural qualities. What would you have to say to that? What, 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 what program? We received some uh, interesting accounts from eyewitnesses of the event that the zombies themselves were Show or showed fear of this large um, kind of uh, statue, you is know, behind black? the dormitory. Is it, is it in covered? black robes? Ah. It, they call it the Grim Reaper. Yes. Okay. Could you um, ex makes ex perfect sense? Of course. In the, in the Middle Ages, in the Dark Ages, uh, the the what we call the Black Plague, we think was in fact uh, a cover, a covert operation uh, of the European royalty of the time to put down a zombie uprising. And uh, the zombies at that point were essentially, uh, there were a lot of them and they were organized in a way that they haven't been since that we know of. And they were asking for uh, recognition. It was a kind of a zombie civil rights movement. 
and and instead of doing what they said they were doing, in fact, the uh, the powers that be uh, put doctors in the field, all dressed in black, shrouded in black, uh, to uh, to kill the zombies in in the, in the uh, under the pretense that they were providing a serum that would somehow support their life. And Any fears that you harbored in your human life will only magnify, multiply when you go through the change into zombie. So if the students uh, at, at the advanced program were, t were afraid of the, this figure behind the dormitory, then when they transformed into zombies, they would have retained that fear. They would have definitely retained that fear all the way through their change. The most mysterious thing for me as a researcher about zombies is not whether they exist or when they existed, although we can talk about that, but, but how they communicate. Uh, and not among one another when they're together, but from generation to generation, since there is no formal history, there's no written history, we don't understand how they know who they are and what to do, unless it's something like the way bees or ants understand what to do. These, those people treated the game so seriously. It was like they were fanatical about it, like a religion, like a cult. Students that come to advance have to have pizza all the time. They don't eat all up and they put it in their rooms and go and eat it the next day. It's like, it's like people just don't care anymore. Like, the world used to be green and happy before humans were here. Why can't it be like that when we leave here? And, I mean, zombies. They're affected by it, with like their graves being polluted as well. Was it the water that caused it all? Of course it was. I mean, think about it. Three glasses of water a day? I have been drinking my own urine for days already, so that's why I wasn't affected. Don't worry, those days are over. <laughs> 